Now, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you see a Mercedes-Benz S-Class? If you think it's a kind of car for dignitaries, CEOs, and even political figures, well, you're not wrong. After all, the S-Class has shuttled those kinds of people for decades now. But what makes this large sedan and the place we're shooting at such a special thing? Well, let's find out together, shall we? Right now we're in Acropolis Loyola by Santa Lucia land and if you look around it doesn't look like much but this will soon be the kind of place where you could find one of these in the driveway. Yes, this is going to be an executive village soon. And think of it, if, if you buy a plot of land here it's going to be an investment if you wait a couple of years. But before we get carried away with properties and investment and all that, let's stick to the topic of cars first. Now, what we have here is the S450. But what's available in the showrooms right now is the S320 and the Mercedes Maybach. So don't worry, the S450's goodies are also found in the S320. Now, why do we have an S-Class? Well, Mercedes-Benz Philippines wanted you to experience it with us, what it's like to be with an S-Class. And for that, we thank Mercedes-Benz Philippines. Now, that out of the way, let's talk about the design of the S-Class. Now. From the look of it, well, I'm more of a classic Benz guy, so I appreciate that there's the good old hood star right here and the classic wide imposing grille as well. Also, these three bars of LEDs, well, that's a bit of an Easter egg from Mercedes-Benz. It's to determine which car you're looking at. Now, three bars here signifies that you're looking at an S-Class. Now, if you have an E-Class, those are two bars, and in a C-Class, it's just one bar. It's a neat little Easter egg there. Now, I have to say it's got classic proportions of a big sedan. You got that long hood and that short deck at the back. And while we're at it, this car rides on 18-inch alloy wheels and so does the S320. Now, all in all, I have to say again, classic proportions. It's what you expect from a big Mercedes. Long, imposing, and in a sort of subtle way. So that's the exterior covered. What is it like on the inside? Now for ergonomics, if you own a Mercedes-Benz before, you lucky person you, it should all look familiar. You, know, you still have your light switches and the rotary dial, your parking brake release is still down here, and you still have the single switch that does everything. It controls the wipers, the signals, and the high beams and whatnot. Uh, in this case, it comes with an electronic gear selector, and they're trying to do a bit of a throwback here because old Mercedes Benzes had column shifts like way back in the 60s and 70s, and they tried to do that here too with this electronic thing. Now, personally, I wish the stock would be bigger, but well, this is Mercedes Benz, so they try to keep things a little bit more minimalist here, right in front of me. Now, for the steering wheel, it's a fairly big wheel, and what you have are the controls, not only for your cruise control and whatnot, you even have your switches for your voice command, a home button, your phone, your cruise control and whatnot. And the instrument cluster is a digital unit that is customizable in many different ways, but we'll get to that later. Now, for the center bit, again, bit of a throwback from past Mercedes models, you have round dials, which sort of reminds me of a W123 Mercedes from the 70s. And of course, huge wood panel here, which you can slide down that reveals a pair of cup holders. Now, Mercedes's infotainment system is controlled by these. Now, Mercedes calls it the command system, which sounds pretty really cool if you ask me. So you can control it either with this dial or this touchpad, but we'll get in depth on that a little bit later. Now, this is the bit where ergonomics are more, well, let's just say 
flush tin. So you have your seat controls, your navigation radio, all in one panel here, and that minimizes the clutter around the dashboard. And if you own one of these, you will appreciate it because you don't want clutter and all that. So other buttons here, you have your, your stop start button, your drive modes, and even a button to raise or lower the suspension, which is pretty good. And of course, on this side, you have a button to turn on the infotainment system and your volume controls. And there's even a button to lower or raise the rear headrest, which comes in handy if you're backing up. But then again, you can teach your driver how to use these features and well, all is well. Now for the center console, and you know, it's pretty big and all that. You can open it two ways, either on the left side or the right side, but it's actually not big enough to put in stuff. But I think you're gonna forgive it because it has one of these, a wireless charger. It's one of the few cars in the market right now that comes with this feature. Now that I mentioned that the instrument cluster is customizable, well, let's take a bit of a tour of it. Now there are three modes to choose from. There's sporty, classic, and here, progressive. Now progressive is sort of the most high-tech looking one. So you have your, your dial in the middle and all that, and you have your information on each side. And you can control the display of the instrument cluster with this Blackberry-like button on each side of the steering wheel. So what are the other modes like? Well, we hit the home button and use this blackberry button and change the design from there so this is the classic look and personally it's my favorite or you can choose the sporty design which makes everything black and yellow now for other displays well you can change a couple of things that are shown in front of you now for example when we head back to the trip meter now in the middle is your relevant information, your fuel economy and whatnot, and your average speeds, your range, and well, the usual stuff. But if you flick to the right, you can even change that tachometer into, well, in this case, a GPS map, your econometer, and even your average fuel economy and all that. And, well, perhaps not exactly a feature most S-Class owners will utilize. It even has a G-Force meter. Now, we move to the center and we head to the command infotainment system. Now, what we have here are the vehicle controls. And you can control just about every aspect of the vehicle in here, at least for the interior. So you can control the driver's seat and all that. And um, even the exact pinpoint location of the lumbar support. Then there's the seat heating, and you can even reset it all at once if it gets a little too confusing for you. Then there's the climate control system, and this car, by the way, has four-zone climate control. Now, the S-Class also comes with something called attention assist, and it sort of reminds you to take a break in between drives, especially if you're going for a long drive. And you also have your light settings. Now, this car comes with ambient lighting, and you can change the colors on the go whether it's white, purple, red, blue, or whatever color of the spectrum you fancy. Now, of course, for entertainment options, this car does come with Bluetooth, as you would expect in a car of this caliber, and it even has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. So that's the front of the S-Class covered. Let's head on over to the back. But this is the place to be in a Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the back seats. And this is the long wheelbase version, so there's a couple of extra inches inside here, and we all know where it went. Oh, there by the footwell. But if you want even more legroom, simply press this button and push this button for even more stretch out room. And while we're on the subject of the power seats, press this button again, and you can recline the seat and even slide them a little bit forward to really lounge out. Now, as you'd expect, at the back of a Mercedes S-Class, there's a lot of wood and leather. They even went as far as putting wood cappings on the cup holders. Now, wood here, wood there, and more leather, soft touch, as you'd expect. And the overall effect is it's one of the most comfortable experiences I've had in a back seat. Now, for storage space, you have one compartment here, and if that's not enough, you have another one right behind here and to keep things cozy and cool there are pillar mounted air conditioning vents and if you need to charge your phone you don't have to tell your driver to reach for your phone and charge it at the front there are two 12 volt sockets 
here at the back. Now to keep the sun out, you have sun blinds by the window and even by the rear windshield. And to roll them down, simply click the window switches to put them down and to put them back up, it's the same way. And to keep things extra cool here at the back, you even have pillar mounted air conditioning vents. And for you not to tell your driver that you need to charge your phone, you have to reach it all the way up the front. There are two 12 volt sockets right below the air conditioning controls. And if you need to freshen up before you get down from the S-Class, you get a pair of vanity mirrors to go along with it. Now, all in all, I have to say the S-Class is one of the most comfortable experiences I've had in the back seat. And yes, we have to drive it, but just give me a few minutes. I'm just gonna relax a little bit. Today I have a chauffeur with me, if you haven't noticed. So, what is it like on the move here in the S-Class? Well, I have to say that it's even more comfortable when you're on the go because the ride is very, very smooth. And that's despite having run-flat tires. Granted, the run-flat tires do send a shock from time to time, but it's not uncomfortable and actually you'll barely notice it. The only time you'll notice it if, is when it makes a bit of a thumping sound, but it's a very muffled one. Now, back here, I've already reclined the seat and moved the seat bottoms forward. So I'm in a more comfortable and relaxed position, which is great if you're coming from a long, hard day at the office or if you're busy making your next investment deal. Now, also keeping me cool here are four air conditioning vents, two on the pillar and two by the center console. And it even has its own controls because this uses a quad zone climate control. So I'm here, I'm sort of laid back, and I have my air conditioning. I even have a bit more privacy here thanks to these window shades. Of course, what's enjoyable here, the back of the S-Class is, this being the long wheelbase model, is the extra legroom. And again, it just adds to that feeling of, well, space, comfort, and luxury, and all that. Now with everything here being soft touch, and with all the air conditioning vents on and stuff like that, well, this is a really nice way to end your day at the back seat of a Mercedes S-Class. But what if in the rare occasion you have to drive one of these? Well, we'll find that out too. Well, in the rare instance that you have to drive the S-Class, well, you're not gonna feel sorry that you're sitting here in the front because like the back, it's a very relaxing experience here too. Now, of course, you have to do the steering yourself and stuff like that, but the controls are light, the steering, the brakes, the accelerator, and all that. It doesn't require much effort, and it makes the driving experience as serene as possible. And also, the extended leather and all that means you can just pop your arm just about everywhere, and it will be padded too. Maneuverability is surprising for a car of this size, but of course, that doesn't mean that, well, it'll handle like a small sports sedan. Remember, this thing is over 5.2 meters long. So keep that in mind when you're maneuvering along. But still, despite the length and all that, it doesn't feel heavy to drive. It doesn't feel cumbersome and any of that. And again, that's down to the light controls in the S-Class, so steering, brakes, and all that. And all in all, even if you have to drive yourself, you're not gonna feel stressed out. And you also have to say that the quiet cabin adds to that experience. So whether you're seated at the front or at the back of the S-Class, you're gonna feel good about yourself. And you're gonna feel great that you got one of these. So what about the front seat experience of the S-Class and the rare occasion that you have to drive it? Well, just like the back, it's a very serene experience here up front. You're not gonna feel stressed out. You're not gonna feel like, oh, it's not comfortable or any of that. It's actually a very, very serene experience. And that's thanks to the light controls of the steering wheel, the brakes, and all that. 
If you're looking for a sports car experience, well, you're not gonna find it here. That's not the purpose of the S-Class. The purpose of the S-Class is to make you feel as comfortable as possible as the miles pile on. And that also applies here at the front. And also the S-Class packs a whole lot of airbags and a host of safety equipment. Not that also includes attention assist and even something like a rest reminder, reminding you to take a little break from time to time, especially when you're on a long road trip. Of course, helping the serene experience in here are the thick levels of sound deadening. Like just about everything, every outside sound is eliminated. I mean, you're gonna hear the occasional motorcycle engine and stuff like that, but it's not as loud as you would think. And again, that adds to the very comfortable driving and riding experience. Now for performance, well, this is the S450, so it has a 3-liter bi-turbo V6. But again, available in the dealerships are the S320 and the Mercedes Maybach. So the 320 uses a 3-liter engine as well with a turbocharger, and that's good for over 270 horsepower. But here's the most important bit. It has 400 newton meters of torque. So you may not get the power of the 450, but it sure still packs a lot of punch. After all, who's gonna complain of a zero to 100 time of less than seven seconds? It even has an electronically limited top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Not that you'll ever use it here. But regardless of which S-Class you get, all of them shift with a nine-speed automatic transmission and Mercedes-Benz calls it the 9G Tronic. Now, it's one of the smoothest transmissions around and with nine gears to choose from, it promises to deliver pretty good fuel economy. Not that fuel economy is your big worry when you're buying one of these. I mean, after all, you are getting a huge luxury sedan. So whether you're seated at the front or at the back of an S-Class, it is a smooth and serene experience. After all, Mercedes-Benz calls this the special class. At this point, you're probably wondering, well, how much for this luxury German limousine? Well, this S-Class will set you back 9,890,000 pesos. That's for the S320. For the Maybach, well, you have to ask your Mercedes-Benz dealership about that. Whoa, it's a lot of money, but what you're buying into here is a very special car. And again, Mercedes calls this the Sonderklasse, and you're buying into heritage and old school luxury, and along with good old Mercedes-Benz build quality. Yes, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class is expensive, but it's an experience you must experience firsthand. And the best way of doing that is buying it yourself. Now, it's no wonder that captains of industries, VIPs, and CEOs choose this as their daily chariot. Now, this has been Anton Andres from AutoIndustria.com. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. While you're at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well. Thanks for watching.